All right, guys, this is Dave here. We're out there, right there. We're out here on the rock pile. We're at this crazy top of an alpine, but uh, I want to talk to you guys about how we build these bigger ones. And it's the same process that we've done on the other ones. We have a footing, and in this case, we attached all the rebar to my left into the steel of the whole pool before the whole pool was shot created. You can epoxy steel into the into the into the uh, any concrete surface. It can be the pool shell itself, or it can be footings that you've created. And you just create the footings and you put those in concrete them in, as it were. And so that's kind of the same process, but it's a little bit more intense, a little bigger. Trying to walk around on this rebar of the pool, it's a grid and it's kind of a trip zone. But uh, let's walk around and check it out. We'll look on the inside and see what it looks like from in here. And you can see as you walk inside, this is all going to be inside the grotto cave. And we look down, we see the rebar going all the way down into the pool. That was all shotcrete. You can see the shotcrete on top of and around some of the rebar down towards the bottom because they blew the whole pool in all this area to get the, the levels of the pool and the structure of the pool. All this rebar we put in prior to shotcrete to lay out exactly approximately where we're going to put the edge of our boulders and our rock work, how big the interior space was going to be. And that same kind of strategy is what we're going to be taking and continuing on as we go forward. So, so it's all the same thing you guys have seen on other videos. Rebar, we bend it one little piece of rebar at a time and that gives us our shapes. And there's a piece up here on the top that I want to show you too where we be, we're beginning to shape out this big boulder here. This is probably a 14, 12, 13 foot boulder on the top and we're going to be going ahead and shaping this out there's going to be another boulder over here <clears throat> and i'm talking to my thinking about putting an opening right here that if you stand on this bench you can look out so it'll be a place to let light in and also a place to look out at folks who are in the pool over here in that other area and stuff so we'll go ahead and uh climb up this ladder here and we'll go up and i'll show you what i'm talking about up on the top i've got my rebar bender uh, rebar benders are up here and i got my rebar tie wire twister in my pocket and uh, so start off like on the other rocks you've seen with the upright steel going up and then we come uh, come into the phase of trying to shape things out to get them where uh, get the shape of the rock that we want but you need to start somewhere and so I usually take kind of like the backbone of the boulder and I create a single piece of rebar and I try and get a shape that I like so this creates you can continue this pattern and it's playing up and do another one or you can pivot it and make it go back down and you can continue to shape your, your, your bends. You could put a piece of steel right here and then bend these down and have another plane here that's different than over here. And so this piece was brought up. This is from the very bottom uh, area. We attached this piece to the upright that was already going all the way down in the swimming pool steel. And then we, uh, and I bent this one that was over here this is going down all the way into the concrete pylon, the concrete post that we built, and that's going to be uh, structural and supports this whole this whole giant cacophony of rebar going everywhere. The whole structure is in these pylon support areas, and around the perimeter, we just thicken up the steel and really add a lot more. I then added another piece right here, connecting these two together, and as I got it down to about here, then I bent it over. And that gave me some place that I can now attach these guys to. So, because I got my overlaps, you want to get a good 20, 24 inches, 22 inches of overlap, overlap with your rebar. And when you do that, then you're up to code, and that's the way engineers like to see it. That's what you, how you want to do it. So, we have this piece coming over, and then it goes back down and creates more of the shape. But once you get these backbone pieces of rebar in here, you've got yourself the shapes that you're going to have and it guides you in the future steps of where you put the rebar so and you can sort of play with it and bend it where you want this is half inch rebar it's a lot more work to bend but um, on these bigger jobs the uh, engineers call for the uh, fatter steel the uh, number four uh, rebar and uh, you want to get 40 grade not 60 grade <laughs> 60 grade we found out because uh, the customer or the contractors hired me bought that for his work and you can't even bend it. It just makes you go crazy. So uh, it's too hard. So 40 grade 
half inch rebar is what we'll be using and what we are using now on this. It really allows for the full rock guys out here for us to be able to uh, make our shapes without just killing ourselves. And we're kind of killing ourselves anyway because it's almost 100 degrees today and we're quite toasty. So anyways, just talking about on these bigger projects, how we put the steel in. It's the same process on a small rock that's just four feet off the ground essentially as opposed to a 15 or even bigger rock. So thought I'd give you a chance to check that out. That's how we do it. All right.